Hi, ladies. Welcome to day three of our training. Today, we're going to go over energetics and the frequency of fitness. Let me go ahead and share screen. Welcome to day three of five, training three of five, titled, But I Don't Feel Like It. <laughs> so let's be fit no matter how we're feeling, shall we? In this training, we're going to dive into the EQ and frequency of fitness and fat loss. We're going to explore the energetics of sustainably fit people, and we're going to explain what they're not telling us, typically. We're also going to deliver the tools and tactics so that you can embody the same frequency. I'm going to show you how to practice the new way of doing fitness, but more importantly, being sustainably fit to generate a lifetime of easy success in this area. And I'm going to give you some homework. Super important, you guys know the drill. This training has five parts. Please watch each video in sequential order. They do build upon each other. You can find the previous videos within the group under the featured tab. Please note that this group and the training all expire in seven days. So if you snooze, you lose. Also, if you haven't watched all three pre-training videos, plus training video one and training video two, go watch them today. Here is a quick snapshot of where you can find every single video. I'm pinning them all in the featured section, which is right to the left of the discussion tab. Before we jump in, I would love to hear how was everyone's homework yesterday? The questions in yesterday's homework were what components of diet culture do you believe you may have been influenced by? What no longer serves you? And what are you ready to let go of? So comment below, let me know the answers to any one or all of these or some combo of these questions. I would love to hear what came up for you and what resonated with you most from yesterday. So this is the big dilemma that we are going to answer today. Here it is. Have you ever experienced a situation where you've been doing all the right things or so it seems you've been doing all the fit things, but you still haven't seen results and or we're also going to help answer what is going on during those times when you just don't feel like doing it, when you don't feel like doing the fit things, whether that's workout, eat healthy. And first, to help us do so, we have Christina B. from Jacksonville, Florida. She didn't have a ton of weight to lose, but she got more fit and she did lose some body fat here. And you can see here as well. Here are some more before afters in this cute, flattering outfit that she's got on. And then here are some before afters of her in her bikini. And she feels so, she like described to me, and you'll get to hear straight from her in a moment. She feels so confident after losing some both bloat and body fat, just getting more tone and just feeling like, you know, the queen that she is. But what's really cool about Christina is she experienced the same thing. She was doing all the right things or most of the right things, but she couldn't figure out like, what was the missing link? Why wasn't she seeing results? you'll get to hear that from her right now. I just want to share my journey um, with Leanne and the L3 method. Um, it was the most impactful four months of my life, honestly, um, from just being able to trust myself, being able to shed unwanted pounds that just were stubborn to get off when I really was at a place where I was trying everything I could think of to um, you know, all the diet tips and tricks that I had brought with me over my almost, you know, 40 years of existence. So I did her program when I was 39, really going through a lot of emotional stress at work and in my relationships and the things that I had done in the past just weren't working. I um, myself was a fitness coach for Beachbody. Um, I tried all the supplements. I'd done every diet and different plan that you could imagine, which kept my weight pretty low throughout my 30s. Um, but was very stressful, right? I was always looking for that next thing that was going to help me lose um, just a few more pounds. And when I found the L3 method and Leanne, I got so much more than I bargained for. I had no idea that I was going to get a total mind transformation um, and the support and really counseling that she provided to me was not anything I was expecting to receive out of this program. And I am so grateful and thankful. I've told Leanne so many times she is just this bright light for us all. And anybody who encounters her just physically feels transformed, not only body wise from her expertise, from um, her fitness background and her nutrition background, but mentally as well, too. It just really transforms my relationship that I have with myself and food and working out and 
the stigma is kind of tied to if I don't do this, I'm not going to see this result. Um, it's it's been so impactful. I didn't have a ton to lose, but it was just that stubborn amount that was just really sticking around that the traditional things that I've done in the past that have worked weren't working this time. So um, came to her with that, and I fully expected to get a full eating plan and restrict myself and be working out like crazy. And I was surprised to know that I was supposed to trust myself with my eating. And she gave me a framework to work with that really um, helped me understand what different foods do to my body. And then also the workout plan that she prescribed for me was a lot more less intense <laughs> than I was doing and beating my body up with some time of rest in there as well, which I was like so grateful for. Again, things that I didn't even experience or know or expect to get out of the program I did. Um, so I met my goal in those four months and there were ups and downs. And um, I certainly didn't have every work week extremely perfect, but Leanne was there for me the entire time, supporting, rooting me on, being that bright light that she is. And um, I let go of a lot of mental things I was holding on to, too, mental stress and anxiety. Um, and that just really helped me be able to sleep better. And all of these different byproducts, you just will not even realize that you'll get out of this program with her. So as I'm rambling on, I'll close it out with, um, hopefully you can see my transformation picture. I felt so confident going on a cruise that was right at the end of my program and um, just felt like my best self. And I've been able to take these um, principles and methods that I've learned from her program and carry them with me um, on a daily basis. So thank you, Leanne. She's so awesome. Oh, yes. And those pictures that you saw, indeed, she was on a cruise and she just, you could tell she's feeling herself as she should be. She felt so confident and like, that just fills me up. That is like everything. The reason why I do what I do. So, so happy for Christina. So proud of her and just so stoked that she got everything figured out now. Okay. Next up. I just want to kind of lay out here this concept that our core beliefs matter. So the majority of this five-day training has been and is about the practical, the action steps. Today, the detour, the other thing that we're looking at, which is just as important, is the energetic component. Now, before I lose you because you're like, oh, this woo-woo stuff, this manifestation, like, wah, wah, I, I hear you, I 100% hear you, and I get... I want to roll my eyes sometimes <laughs> at some of the stuff um, that's out there. But then when we bring it back to quantum mechanics and realizing that a lot of this is rooted in very sound scientific principles that can feel, that can feel good, that can feel grounding. Remember, my company's name is the L3 method, as I've already gone over, which stands for lose the last layer. That doesn't just mean losing the last layer physically, but what often precedes the physical result that we're after is losing the last layer of both the limiting beliefs we have about food, exercise, healthy lifestyle habits. We've been going over those and we will continue to do so. But today, going over and really working through the core beliefs, losing the last layer of limiting self-beliefs that are no longer serving us and are keeping us from the body, the healthy lifestyle, and the vitality that we want. Our core beliefs matter so much that they are quite literally at the helm, steering our ship, steering the ship of our life. So the actions are like way, way down at the bottom, and I'll show you in a moment. And what really, really comes first and what really has the, the first and the final say are our core beliefs. Also, our feelings. Let's talk about feelings for a second. There is and I'll skip down to the third bullet here. There is a like a really popular sentiment or way to deal with feelings right now in the fitness community. And it's F your feelings. Have you guys heard that? Have you heard different trainers and fitness pros and fitness influencers on the internet kind of encouraging people to just say F your feelings or forget your feelings or bury your feelings and just drive for it and get the job done. So we're going to take note of that. It's not good or bad, but I'm going to show you how it's only one tool in our tool belt that we can use to get the result and sustain the result that we want. Emotion is energy in motion. Emotion is the fuel that drives everything that we do. Not only is it our fuel, it's also our desired outcome. We do everything because we want to obtain a feeling. We have a desired outcome that is not visually based. It is not audibly based. It's not number, logic, spreadsheet based. The root desire behind all of those things 
is we just want to feel good. And that can come in the form of we feel desirable by our spouse. We feel on top of things, in control. We feel like we know what we're doing. We feel, and that is kind of what's beneath that is we feel safe, we feel secure, we feel grounded. But yeah, the root of every desired outcome is a feeling. It's not a certain number on the scale. It's not a certain aesthetic. It's not even what you see in the mirror. It's what you feel when you see something in the mirror or on the scale or when you see the look in someone else's eyes, whatever it is, it's the way you feel. So the emotions drive us. The feelings are what we want. So if feelings have been the goal all along, why are we only using this one tool in our tool belt, which is to go mind over matter with stuff to say, forget your feelings, just drive forward, tunnel vision, that's it. This is the old way of doing fitness. There's a new way of being fit that I'm going to go over with you. The old way to kind of go into things a little bit is, you know, the slogans we grew up with, some of us, <laughs> Nike, just do it. Um, no pain, no gain. Pain is just weakness leaving the body. You don't get the butt you want by sitting on it. All of these terms, F your feelings, all of these things really encapsulate this older ethos of fitness. There's a new way now of being fit. And it's about tuning into the body and a lot more. And we're going to dive into that today. So how does all of this tie together? How do our core beliefs, our feelings and emotions, and the practical action, how do they all link up? It's through this funnel called BITFAR, which is obviously an acronym, and it stands for beliefs, thoughts, feelings, actions, and results. Now, most fitness professionals hang out down around this area at the bottom. Hanging out in this bottom area doesn't typically lead to lasting results. So of course the premise is if we change our actions, we'll get a different result. Okay. Fair enough, makes sense. But if we feel a certain way, if we feel negative things with this action, and, and I'm also going to help you guys understand how to break down and really see your feelings for what they are, because we're running around with feelings and we're not recognizing them, we're not acknowledge, acknowledging them, and it's steering us in the wrong direction. And we don't even know it. So I'm going to help you guys kind of identify what's going on. Feelings, like I mentioned, drive the action. Feelings are, we feel something and it causes us to want to take action. And this is universal. When a butterfly flutters its wings, it's doing so because it felt a feeling first and it wanted to do that thing next. Another wonderful example is you can just look at the stock market. The stock market is completely based on human emotion. Behind feelings are thoughts. So feelings are typically one word, a one word description. Thoughts are full sentences. And the thoughts make us feel things, okay? So, but behind those thoughts are beliefs, core beliefs. And these are usually very short phrases, short sentences, and they're beliefs about us, how I feel about myself, how you feel about yourself. So a very common example, I am not enough. That would be like a negative core belief, right? I am not worthy. I can't figure it out. I'm not smart enough. I'll never have that. I don't deserve it. So these are kind of some of the core beliefs that we wrestle with when we have a desire. I want to be fit. But when our core belief says we're not worthy of being fit, you see how now we become a block channel and everything gets kind of like mixed up. Mixed energy equals mixed results. So here's the thing. If you have a core belief that you are worthy, truly worthy of the thing that you desire, you are a clear channel. And the only things that are missing then are the knowledge components, the how to's. Okay. I believe I deserve to have this thing. I want this thing. Let me go figure out how to get this thing. And then you obtain the necessary knowledge and tools and you accomplish what you want very, very quickly. That's if you're an open, clear channel, because now your thoughts are supporting the result. The feelings are supporting the result and the action steps from this higher frequency, which is caused by these other things. But if your core belief is that you don't deserve and are not worthy of the thing that you want, and you'll pull supporting evidence from neutral information around you, but you're going to use that information, you're going to digest it through a lens by which you see things because that lens is your core belief, and you'll create thoughts to support what you feel about yourself, what identity you currently carry, and then they'll create feelings that will probably be mixed in nature 
And then those feel those mixed feelings will create mixed actions and those mixed actions will create mixed results. And this is a very frustrating zone to be in because you'll think in your head, but I'm doing everything right. I think I'm doing everything, but there may be small pieces that are, that are being left out that you don't even realize because of that lens, that filter that you're seeing everything through. And it's quite literally blocking you from seeing the way things can be done, which is often more easy and more simple than how we're overcomplicating it. Overcomplicating things is sometimes this mischievous way that our lovely uh, core beliefs like to keep us from getting the thing that we want because we don't believe we deserve it. Okay, so this is all in the quantum mechanics sector and we can use quantum mechanics to easily stay fit for the long term. Now, I'm excited to give you these three helpful analogies that you can tuck in your tool belt that will help you get into the frequency of a fit person. So just try these out. All of them involve you separating yourself a bit from your body. So I know this might seem a little, you know, multiple personality disorder-ish, <laughs> um, but just again, like look at your body as a separate entity for a moment because it's kind of like, Think of it as like the home to your soul, to your consciousness, to your spirit. People have different names for these things. But first one, the best friend analogy. So think about this for a moment. And I'm going to show you some snippets of an interview I did on the frequency of fit fitness momentarily here, where I'll dive more deeply into um, why your body is truly your best friend. But just reflect for a moment. When you approach your best friend with unconditional love, isn't that what your best friend will probably respond best to? When we come at someone we love with criticism, with, um, hey, you know, you're cool, but you really should change this, or I'll love you more if you just do that, that's conditional love. And how does that feel? Think about that. That doesn't feel really good. If your best friend came to you and said, you know what, you would be a lot more attractive if you lost some weight. Can you imagine? I would just be like, excuse me? <laughs> I would not let my best friend talk to me that way. However, this is the way some of us are speaking to ourselves in the mirror when we look at our bodies. So the law of unconditional acceptance tells us that only when we accept the thing, then we can change it. And it's like, I understand what a paradox, what a tough thing to wrap our heads around. Truly, like you're telling me that I don't like this thing, but I have to accept it anyway. And then I can change it from there. Like it seems totally backwards. But trust me on this. If we have unconditional acceptance towards our bodies, that's how we're going to get into the frequency that allows us that greater understanding and allows us to see this is how we can move this, shift this, change this to get the result that we want. Okay, here's our second analogy, the scorned lover analogy. All right, you ready? Think about being in a monogamous relationship with a man. This is the agreement that you guys have set forth for your relationship, monogamy, exclusivity. Okay, now let's say you find out that your lover, this man, has gone behind your back and he's cheated on you. Now, think about this man coming to your doorstep and giving you one flower. He's giving you one rose and he says, can you please forgive me? Can we go back to normal now? I'll never do it again. Here's here's one single rose. What would you say? You'd be like, um, no, that's not enough. That's not an one rose. That's not enough to make me trust you again. That's not enough to make me feel appreciated again. It's not enough. No, you might slam the door in his face. I don't know. <laughs> now, let's say he sends you a dozen roses and it has a short little apology note, like a little card. You know how cards come with like a dozen roses and there's like a little short message on the card and he's like, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you. Okay. It's a nice gesture. Is it going to help you trust him again? Is it going to get you right back to the same place you were where your love can continue to grow and flourish? Probably not. Now, let's say this man sends you, you know, a dozen roses and other presents and things he knows you'll love every single day. Let's say he calls you and he leaves you voicemails. Let's say he's, he writes you, you know, multiple, multiple page letters explaining exactly what happened, where he went wrong, why you can absolutely count on him to never do this again, how deeply sorry he is, you know, all the things. Now he's getting closer to what he needs to do to potentially win you back. Okay. Think about your body. Let's say for a long time, you have not been treating your body right. You haven't been giving her what she's been asking for. You've been running her ragged. You know, you haven't been getting enough sleep. You may have had really good reasons for not getting enough sleep. That's, you know, not on the table for discussion. Like you have a newborn, you have a job with a demanding workload. I get it. 
but just think about like what the body is receiving for a moment. So sleeplessness, really, really tired, dragging, you haven't been hydrating your body, you know, you've been feeding your body garbage, right? <laughs> you've been feeding her junk food and way too much caffeine and other weird supplements and stimulants. And you, you just, you've been neglecting her. You haven't been nourishing her. You haven't been treating her you're right okay and now let's say you're like all right i'm going to change so you eat one salad okay is that enough for your body to trust you and be like okay this person is finally going to take care of me she's finally going to give me what i need every single day no your body doesn't trust you so your body is holding that extra weight and it's like armor like okay i don't know i don't know what you're going to do to me this is especially true by the way if we have compromised our metabolism and we've gone through like the starvation diets then the body is really holding on to the extra weight because it doesn't know when you're going to go through another period of starvation let's say you've been very sedentary and you go and you do one workout you just do one workout your body is still like mm, i don't know maybe she's making a turn for the better maybe we're going to see some really positive changes but i need to see a little more before I'm gonna go ahead and drop this weight and trust you. <laughs> so then you start eating nourishing, healthy, wonderful, delicious foods on a regular basis. You start exercising almost every day and making it a regular part of your life. You start drinking enough water every single day and sleeping enough and practicing stress management techniques so you don't get overwhelmed and anxious and, and completely you know tax out your adrenals and your central nervous system. Eventually your body's gonna be like, okay, I think that we're on the right track. I can trust this person and love and trust can be built between you and your body. You're going somewhere and you're going to see the results that you want to see. And then the last analogy is really just pointing out that your body is the actual customer. She is queen. So instead of trying to like manipulate the body or extract a result from it, try to get it to maneuver, to do what you want it to do. Instead, let's get on the same side of the negotiating table with the body and just see the plan together. Okay, how can we make both of us happy here? How can we show both of us love and support and safety and security? Because remember, you are an intuitive being and your body, the soma, will show you through sensations, through emotion, what it's trying to say. It'll tell you. You can tune in and you can feel okay, this is the right thing for me to eat, or this is the right thing for me to do in this scenario to take care of my body. And then for those times when we just don't feel like it, what's happening really is not, it's not the thing that we don't feel like doing. It's that the thing is reminding us of something else from our past, from some belief or negative thought, something that doesn't feel good. It's reminding us of that. And so we're taking it out on the thing and saying, you know what? I don't want to do that. So just shifting the understanding and realizing that we can still feel our feelings. We don't have to make our feelings wrong. We can feel lazy. We can feel grumpy. We can feel irritated and we can see our fitness. We can see the healthy thing, whether it's a healthy meal or a wonderful, like enjoyable workout. We can start to see these things as nourishment and as a home base that will actually make us feel better and not be further reminders of whatever it is that we're avoiding within our own psyche, within our own being, within the core belief that we currently feel about ourselves. We can use our fitness and we can use our healthy lifestyle habits to, to hold us, to embrace us, to make us feel better. And this is truly the difference between a sustainably fit person and a temporary fit person or someone who is not fit. Somebody who is looking at their fitness, looking at those habits as like part of their identity, part of their coming home, coming back to baseline and just being like, oh, you know, life isn't perfect. Things are crazy right now, but I can go do this and it will make me feel closer to me. It'll make me feel more at home in my body. It won't feel foreign. It won't feel like a negative reminder of something that I've failed at a hundred times in the, in the past. No, it'll feel good. So when someone is trying to get in shape from a fear-based, fear-driven place, it will feel like a lot of pressure and a lot of proving. Proving to other people, 
but also a lot of proving to ourselves. Like, I can do this. I'm so scared that I might not do it because I'm so scared to fail again, to be wrong again, to let myself down again. And, and I, and I think that's what's going to happen. So I have to really, really put a lot of pressure on myself and really prove that it's not going to be this way this time around. <sighs> let all that energy go. Let it all go. It's all in our minds and doesn't, it has no place. It doesn't serve us any purpose. It doesn't need to be here versus someone who is just they know through and through and through their whole being that it is their given birthright to be fit, to be healthy, to have high levels of energy and vitality. Someone who just knows this in the depths of their being, when they're going about doing something fit, you know, taking a, a healthy action step, there's this energy of neutrality and just knowing. Another way to put it is trying to be versus identity. When someone is, take for instance, you know, any profession, let's just say someone is trying to become a hairdresser versus they're a hairdresser. When someone is trying to become a hairdresser, they're working really hard. They're learning very, very quickly, as fast as they possibly can. They're trying experimenting different things. They're getting their hours of experience in. They're on their way to becoming what they want to be, which is a hairdresser. So when you're a hairdresser, it's like, this is how I identify in this aspect of my life in terms of you know my career and you can do this with any career choice so when we're trying to get fit of course there's going to be some of that energy present because we aren't there yet the reality is you know we are really trying hard to become something right and that's okay but just knowing that that is not the permanent energetic state there is a next place that you will get to just know that if you're feeling feelings of like discomfort and like I don't know what I am or who I am and I'm leaving the old me behind to become this new me, but I'm not really sure about this because I've never been this new me yet. Just know it gets easier. It becomes your identity and, and it just feels more chill. Another way to look at this is strategy versus solace. So when we're strategizing, we're creating the game plan. This is of course a necessary component. This is what I do with every client. We create a strategy, but at a certain point, that strategy turns into your solace. It turns into your coming home moment every day. It turns into the thing that you turn to, that you look to, to just land in your space and feel good and feel grounded and centered. And it's beautiful. And you have that to look forward to if you're not there yet. And once you've experienced it, once you've gotten into that frequency, it'll be so easy for you to tap back in and tap back in and tap back in. Life, life's you're going to have like wonky moments. We all do, but you'll know this is like my home base. This is my ground. This is where I can default back to and everything will be cool. And I know exactly like I'm going to have the body that I want, that I want it to look like, feel like, because I have that strategy that's just become a part of who I am. So a great case in point of one way that prevents people from ever getting to that space is something like that uh, food prep Sunday stress that we talked about in yesterday's training. So if we always have to do something really, really hard that takes a lot of our time and energy and requires a lot of discipline, we don't get to shift into that place of just chillness and just like, I know no matter what, I'm going to be a fit person. I know no matter what happens this week, it'll be, it'll be all good because this is who I am. It's not something I do. It's just who I am. It's my default. So the trying to be fit person will have a lot of anxiety. And if they want to go do something fun on Sunday, which they should absolutely do, there, sh there should never be anxiety or like shame around wanting to go spend time with your loved ones and enjoy your life. But remember how that mixed energy will create a mixed result. So if we're always feeling shame about all these different things, then that Sunday food prep time that was missed will cause us to go into the shame spiral throughout the rest of the week. And those thoughts will create those feelings, which will create slightly different actions. And then that creates that different result than what we want it to be. Somebody who just knows like, I don't have to prep anything. I'm still, I know that I'm going to make the healthy decisions no matter what, like I'm going to be fit. I'm going to find a way to eat healthy. Even if I do have to do it a little bit on the fly or on the go, I know all the different tools and tactics which is what I, you know, give all my clients and teach my clients all the little hacks and tools and tactics. There's definitely not enough time to go through all of that in this training, but having all of those there for you, you're like, I'm good. I don't have to worry about a food prep Sunday ever again. <laughs> so there's this deep sense of reliance in their system that no matter what happens, they're going to be fit. They're going to be healthy. They're going to be lean. 
whatever it is that they want, because that's their default setting. And that's what I want to get you to. I want you to get to your own beautiful, unique default setting of what healthy and fit looks like for you. So because this is what 80% plus, plus, plus of the population gets tripped up on, again, bit far, beliefs, thoughts, feelings, actions, results. Most people are hanging out down around actions, results, and they're never looking upwards at everything else that's driving it. And then when they have a feeling that's in contrast to the only feeling that the fitness industry says that we should have, which is like, rah, 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 go do it, rah, like, what are your feelings? Like, let's go. When they have anything else besides that rah, rah, feeling, which then they don't do the thing. There's no consistency. And then without consistency, we're not going to see the results. And this is why I invented Exquisite, which is the world's very first mood-based workout app. I had such a fun time creating this app. It took a really long time and it was a lot of hard work, but it was worth it. And basically when you jump into the app, you can see that you get to choose your workout based on your mood. After you've chosen your mood for the day, then you get to go in and choose which um, goal you have. Like, I wanna grow my booty. I wanna get shredded abs. I want full body fat burning, as well as choosing the duration of the workout that you want. And I know it looks like I spelled exquisite wrong. I kind of wanted to put a play on the actual spelling because it's like exquisite set, like the set of reps in a workout. So yeah, <laughs> you can go check that out. It's on the Apple store and it's on uh, Google play. This app is now creating more tools in everyone's tool belt. So the F my feelings tool is a great tactic for those who just need to get the thing done because they've been delaying. Maybe they just can't get moving. So it's a way for them to just start. However, for the long term, and you can go check this out for yourself, you can kind of gauge this against any fitness influencers that you've watched over the years. I'm not talking like over the months or over a couple of years, but watch people go for years and years and years, see which of those people have stayed fit for the long term, and then feel into their energy a little bit if you can. Like get a sense of where their drive, their motivation comes from, how they approach their fitness, what it feels like. And I can all but guarantee you that this is not the only way that they self-motivate. So this is one great option, but another option now that you have access to is the second thing, the coming home back into the body, the honoring of the feelings, the paying attention to what the body is trying to tell us, and then shaping and augmenting our workouts to fit what is going on internally. So I mentioned two kinds of fitness journeys. And what I simply mean by that is there's one fitness journey where the person has never worked out before. They're trying to get themselves to do this very foreign thing. And these people can oftentimes be very good at self-preservation. They can be very good at knowing like when is too much, when to stop. But what they're not good at is realizing their potential, leaning into their edges and really seeing what they're capable of. And these people may be doing this in other areas of their life, like career or relationships or being parents very, very true, but something is, has been holding them back in their fitness. And again, like they have strengths where the second type I'll, I'll outline in a second has weaknesses. And then they have weaknesses where the second type has strengths. So the second fitness journey is the one that is no stranger to leaning into their edges. They have gone past their edges. They have seen what they're truly made of. However, these people don't know when to stop. They are so good at mind over matter, but they are not good with tuning into what like they need, what, the, what their body needs intuitively and recognizing when this is more important than this, when this painful sensation is more important than a certain rep count that they promised they would tell themselves to finish. So in this case, this second person on this type of fitness journey really does well when they come back home to their feelings, when they start to realize that introducing a softness and a more gentle consistency to their workout structure, to their total approach to their bodies, instead of treating their body like, you know, like a race where there's a finish line, there's an end point, there's a trophy, there's a medal, there's some external reward. And then shifting that and realizing it's more like maintenance, how you would treat like a really beautiful car. Obviously our bodies are infinitely more amazing than a car, but bear with me for a second. If you want your car to remain in good shape, let's say it's not electrical, it's like a, um, a gasoline car. You wanna change the oil regularly. You wanna change the windshield wipers. You wanna get it cleaned regularly. You wanna change the tires and check the tire pressure. You'll want to get it like really deep cleaned, like detailed. Um, you know, once a year or maybe even more frequently. This is how you keep a vehicle looking really nice. 
And there's no end point to it. There's no like, I'm going to get my vehicle as clean as possible. And then that's it. It's like, no, how can I maintain this and be consistent so that it really stays nice for the long term? It's the same with our body. So there's that's those two kinds of fitness journeys. And by the way, I witness both all the time. And that's why it's really beautiful how we can customize this and give people different options depending on what they're facing down at the moment and they're trying to tackle. Before we jump into this amazing frequency of fitness interview I did, um, in 2016, I had two spinal surgeries, as you guys know. I think I mentioned that in like the very first pre-training video. And this experience reshaped my entire practice. These injuries happened because I was ignoring my body, because I was ignoring sensations. I was that second version. I was the all mind over matter. I would be in so much back pain and I would just choose to ignore it and still do crazy stuff. And so I realized if I kept going down this path of F my feelings and ignoring all of my, you know, emotions, emotion, energy and motion that's going on in my body, I would be in really big trouble. So I said, you know what? It's time to change the way that I approach all of this. And then that journey for me caused me to change everything about my practice. It caused me to realize that my clients need so much more than the typical trainer that's telling them one more rep, like, come on, like F your feelings. My clients deserved so much more. They deserve to understand and be motivated towards a different end, which was falling back in love with your body. And the only way to do that, the only way to have, again, going like splitting yourself apart from your body for a moment, the only way to develop a beautiful relationship with anyone is to have better communication, is to listen, is to spend time, is to show the five love languages. And that's what I had to do. And that's what I started helping my clients do as well. Okay, let's jump into this amazing interview. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show different clips. So I'm going to play it. And I have different clips written out here. We're not going to, the whole thing is like over an hour, I think. So we're just going to watch some really different, like very pertinent parts here. Okay. I'm so excited for you guys to see this. Experience where they can love their body. So welcome, Leanne. Thanks for taking time to chat with me. Thank you so much, Jackie. Thank you for the intro. <laughs> yes, yeah. So I wanted to bring you on here because, you know, in the world of personal growth, we have just some great minds. We have, you know, there's people who um, have mastered the vibration of money, right? Not the strategies, but the vibration. Um, you know, great strategies will always flow from being in the right vibration. Um, we have people who have mastered the vibration of love and aligned partnership. And from the moment I met this woman, it was really clear to me that uh, she is someone who has mastered the vibration of fitness. She is that person. And she doesn't just rely on one strategy for decades to maintain her fitness. She maintains the frequency of fitness. And from there, she's she's always able to find her way to fitness, even when circumstances change, whether that's an injury, a surgery, um, or we'll get into this. But a while back, she gained some weight on purpose. And to me, that's the ultimate credibility in having mastery in the frequency of something, because being able to find your way back when your circumstances change, the emotions like shame and guilt and fear that hold a low frequency, um, you know, those vibrate really slowly while vibrations of love and joy and peace have a higher frequency. Um, and so when it comes to fitness, you know, in some instances, I know that a person can be motivated by, you know, shame or guilt or fear. But when it comes to sustaining a fit body long term, do you find that it's more helpful to be motivated by those higher vibrations? Or do you can a person use any emotion as fuel? Yeah, that's such a great question, Jackie. So the first, the first part of that is really, it's your body, your choice. So you can use whatever you want to get whatever result you want. And that's like the beauty of it. It's your decision. Mm -hmm. um, however, we get to look at the short term and long term results, consequences, whatever you want to call them of using those different vibrations and getting into those different frequencies and then directing them at a goal. So can you lose weight and get and look like a fit person? And, and I guess by all, you know, in terms of purposes, be fit in a lower vibration like what comes to mind always for me and i'm not bashing her because i personally love her but chloe kardashian's revenge body show remember that show revenge yeah. body the premise is like getting getting fit and losing weight from a place of revenge from a place of i want to show this person or this circumstance whatever as i said and it's I, it's empowering in one sense i saw how empowering that can be for somebody but yes we do get to question how high or low is the frequency of revenge so the short-term benefit or the short-term uh, possibility of losing weight from uh, self-loathing, self-hatred, shame, guilt, um, any of those things, very high. You can absolutely get the job done. You can lose weight that way. But I look at what are the long-term consequences of that? What does that do in terms of, <clears throat> you know, creating a more civic environment internally, wreaking havoc long-term? If that comes to be the vibration that you find to as your set point to get to where you need to go long-term, that can be very detrimental when you build in that habit. You know, it's going to take that, it's going to be that much more difficult to 
turn that ship in another direction towards a different habit. Like yeah. getting from a space of joy and pleasure. That makes sense. You know, what that makes me think of is, so when we're talking about the scale of vibrations, you know, shame being the lowest and then guilt and fear and anger. Sometimes what I've learned is that anger can be a high for a person who stays in shame all the time. So like with the the revenge body, it's like, if I'm just in shame, at least that revenge, it's a higher vibration than the shame. So it gets you out of the shame. And then what I noticed with some of the stuff you post is you're calling people, you're beckoning them into a place of love. I can really feel that from the work you're doing. It's like, Hey, you're already perfect. Like let's, let's do this so we can love our body. Let's do this so we can enjoy our life so that we can have peace when we do things. Yes. Yeah. And I want to make the, the like delineation here. Anger in its purest form is a potent, powerful, wonderful emotion and it's it's often tied to love anger coming through your body sometimes is is your self-love coming through and saying no this is not anymore yeah but yeah when anger gets convoluted and turned into aggression on others or turned into you know self-hatred on yourself then we're working from a state of mind and we're not tuned into the body and then there's more of a potential for getting injured Mm -hmm. i I work with clients a lot on you know what are my blocks to fitness and a lot of the times there's certain blocks to taking action and there's certain blocks to just even thinking something's possible just because of their worthiness you know, there's a lot of worthiness energy from mom or from dad or from wherever. Do you, do you come across that in your, in your work as well? 100%. There's so many times when a parent unwittingly gives their child such a complex, such a body image issue when they're trying to help, but they do the opposite. When they get their ch- child calorie counting at a young age or, you know, tell their child, like, that, that they weigh too much when they're, like, young or whatever it is, that can be... Uh, have you ever seen that where a kid is, like, yeah. dying on and then they just it gets worse and worse? Well, so and and I work with clients, too, who they'll have that kind of programming. And so, as an adult, they'll, they'll try to swing the pendulum the other way. I'm counting nothing. I'm not going to pay attention. I never have to worry about what I eat because I was always so controlled with it. Like, they, they rather than collapsing the polarity, they just go back from one pole. So, it's strict, strict, strict. And then it's binge, binge, binge. And then it's like, you know, you got to kind of collapse the polarity, clear yes. the blocks so that you can clear the backswing so that you can just transmute all of this and, you know, yes. be yes. with your body, be intuitive. And there, and there you are again. It's, it's, it's like you said, it's still controlling you, it's just in a different way. And at, at the end of the day, it's, it's with the mind. Right. You know? I think when you were talking about, like, let's let's see if people can feel into the frequency from what I'm saying. Like, how how does a fit person feel about um, exercise? Can we, yeah. can we do one? Yeah, how does a fit person feel about, about exercise? Yeah, so this will tie into what, what we're talking about. So exercise is, like, it's, like, pleasurable. It's, like, if, if this is okay to say, it's, like, making love to yourself and, and Arnold actually says that in gym Arnold talks about um, Arnold Schwarzenegger like he used to make love to himself in the gym wow. <laughs> I'm going to tie this in so <laughs> it's pleasure it's love it's enjoyment it's like this sacred juicy time that's it's just for you and think about all the things that I just described it was all like I'm tingling right now it's all in the body none of it's yeah. here that was my next question okay, how beautiful. does a person think about their body so a fit person recognizes the power, how powerful their body is. They, they, when they think of their body, they think of all the incredible things it's capable of. But even through that, why is it so powerful? And why is it so capable? Because it loves you. Because it is the only entity, it is the only being, maybe there's a couple others like your parents or your husband or like it. It's one of the only that will do absolutely anything for you. This, this thing will do anything to keep you safe, it will do anything to give you peace. It will do anything for you. It will go to the end of the earth for you. And it's been there for you since day one. And it will be by your side until the day you leave this earth. It will always be in your corner. And it was, and it will always be your very first home. You know, you have, this is your first home. This is my second home. San Diego is my third home. America is my fourth home. The planet earth is my fifth. You know, so this is your first home. This is, so now thinking about that, thinking about somebody, if you again separate it, this is like my best friend. This is the one person, the one entity that will always be my cor- in my corner, will always have my back, will always give me a place to return home to. When you think of a person like that, how could you ever, ever do anything but love that person? How could you do anything other than be obsessed with and have that person's back and be on that person's team and always be listening? Always be listening. What do you need? What do you need? I got your back. You're a queen. What do you need? What's going on? Okay. All right. We're going here. Okay. Let them, let your body lead. Yeah. Well, and um, speaking of that, so you tested the loyalty and the love of your body by you purposely uh, gained, I think it was 18 pounds of fat on purpose. So that that was what ultimately got my attention. And that was what told me that you were the real deal, because I find that um, I often look at, you know, th- there's someone who's, you know, fit and someone who's not. And sometimes it feels like some of the people who have only ever been fit ever, sometimes maybe aren't quite as in touch with the vibration that people are in at the beginning of their process. And so 
Um, I have a question here. What was my question for you? Oh, so what did you learn about the frequency of fitness through this purpose? So how did gaining that weight affect your vibration and your ability to say, yes, I'm here for, feel like your body's saying I'm here for you. Um, and did it take more than diet and exercise to find your way back to your current level of fitness? Mm, yeah. So the context would lay out really quick. I gained 18 pounds on purpose for two, for two objectives. Number one, I wanted to, like you just said, basically, I wanted to be more, um, viscerally in touch with what my clients were experiencing when they were going through their weight loss journeys. And number two, I wanted to loosen my attachment that my value and my worth was only caught up in the way I looked. First of all, I'm a woman living in this society. So number one, we have a lot of pressure to look a certain way and our value is partially placed on what we look. That's kind of where we're at in society. Right. Number two, I'm a personal trainer. I'm a fitness coach. I used to joke like, I think I said, see, my six pack is my resume. Right. So how I look translates to can I keep a roof over my head, right? Can I pay my bills? Because that's like the trust factor. Like, okay, this person knows what you're talking about because what the way she looks. So I wanted to loosen that and think about, okay, I also have a brain. I also have a big heart. I have these other things I can offer. And those are, those have a place here too. And those are part of my value just as much. So there's the premise, those two things. Um, I learned that like, because I had done so much work and I am because I was fit for so many years and it's so tied into my identity, of yeah. who I always believe I am. It, it was really easy to lose the weight because it was going back to my default. Like it was going, like it, it's my default and it's my normal to eat healthy and enjoy healthy food. It's my normal to enjoy exercise. It's the opposite, but like to be stagnant and to not move my body and to like feed it with lots of chemicals and, and craziness. Right. So what do I always do is I try to flip it around because that's where, that's where we're going to learn. So flip that around. Someone who's overweight and is trying to lose weight from maybe the first time or the third time or the eighth time in their life and just have, having a successful long term that person's default is to be in a more unhealthy state or a more stagnant or, you know, at a heavier weight, whatever you want to call it. Right. So, so what is, what is it that's so easy for them to like go back to that? Just like it was so easy for me to go back to my own default and then like reverse engineering the whole thing. Right. Identity. <laughs> so I saw, I saw a post you made recently or however long ago where you said identity trumps discipline every time or something to that effect. Yes. So it, part of the reason why, why it was your default to be in shape, to be in, a high level of fitness is because that's your identity. You have identity around that. So how can a person create that identity maybe for the first time or rediscover that identity? But what kind of, you know, if I, if someone steps into your energy or frequency, then they're going to believe that that's, that's their identity, that that's their default zone. If I held those beliefs every day, I'd move into that fitness frequency. So. Yeah. 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 So, so it is knowing first and foremost, that it is your birthright. It's your inherent birthright to be fit and healthy. That is your birthright, is to be strong, to have muscle tone, to be agile, to be a, a sleep, smooth panther moving about this world, to feel capable and agile and beautiful. Mm -hmm. That is your birthright. That's the basement. Mm -hmm. but we've gone away from that, right? Okay, this person has gone away from this. So let's go back to something that they can tangibly, like, hold to at a time when they were fit and there was an isness about that. So oftentimes it's when we're really little. Oh, yeah, like that's. And sometimes it's later. Sometimes someone's like, oh, yeah, I was like a cheerleader in high school and I played lacrosse and it was just like easy. I didn't even think about it. Like, so we hearken to that time. And then we look at what is what is like fighting against that belief. What did you like pile on in the journey of life along the way that's now like running up against that? Because that's what happens. There's a trigger and it's like a protector within you rises up. And we never want to blow that protector out because it's just doing its job. We want to love that protector, give it a place at the table to speak. And we always want to do small steps. I always do this. Like we never want to like open our protectors and flood this new belief in. Right. Because that's very scary for the system. That can be very jarring for, you know, our central nervous system. So small steps. So we open a little bit. We're the two soldiers, right? And we just like, we, we like bring it in a little bit. Oh yeah, I was three years old and I was like, really helping the things. Yeah. Feel into that and then like be somatic about it. Okay. Like the floor is still beneath me. The walls aren't shaking. I'm safe. Like really going to basics of safety. Yeah. I love that. Amazing. So I really wanted you guys to get some of that interview. If you want me to post the link to the full interview below, just, uh, Write that in the comments and I will be sure to do so. But as you can see, much of this is felt sense. It's not at the level of mind. It's at the level of body. And that's why I say like our body is the customer. Exposure therapy is in a similar vein to what we were speaking about. It's a shortcut to pair with your new actions. So to take new actions by themselves, like let's say you download an app. The app tells you to do some things that you haven't done before. You haven't done quite that way. Or it's been a very long time. It can feel new and scary and like just the great unknown. And we have doubts that come in and we're not sure if this is really like what we should be doing. And it's difficult. But if you have a coach or if you have some type of tribe or something, someone to plug into and you have a lot of trust there, that you know that they're, they are fit. They're not doing fitness. They be that. They have that frequency. Exposure therapy, being around them, working with them, learning from them, 
um, can be a huge shortcut. It can shortcut you to your goal 5x or more. Talk about taking a quantum leap. <laughs> so I just want to say that if you've been one way your whole life, it is difficult to change. I'm not here to tell you like, you'll hear people say like, change is just one decision away. Yes, that's true, but it's difficult to maintain that all by yourself. But I do want to remind you that you can do it. It's difficult, but you can still do it. You are capable of so much more than you think you are, truly. And familial ties, ancestral ties, epigenetic beliefs that have been passed down, this is all real stuff. Research has proven that these exist. These equal the cards you've been dealt, if you will, but you still get to decide how you'll play that hand. And your destiny only gets to be written by you. And that's the beauty of all of this. Okay, so in that interview clip, you saw that we were talking about blocks. We were talking about um, things that get piled on top of us as we grow older, um, as we you know navigate our way through life. And these blocks come in the shape of, yes, those familial ties. They come in the way of societal beliefs, um, various conditioning, or traumatic incidents that have happened to us in the past that... I also spoke in an interview about protectors that will then create from those traumatic events to there. They exist in our mind and we create them so that we never have to go through that pain again. But the thing is, is those protectors are working with very outdated information. So these are all blocks, if you will, keeping us from being that clear channel to the result that we want. So if we are a clear channel, as I mentioned with Bitfar, we get a clear and a fast result. If we have mixed up energy because there's some blockages on our way there, we'll get mixed results. We won't get the total thing that we're looking for. We'll, we, we might get some of it, but we might also get some frustration in there as well. Fit shaming and fat shaming. These are really great examples of blocks. And I'm going to show you another interview clip with a different incredible woman that um, this is actually from an interview I did on my own channel. It was just so helpful and really naming, okay, this is what this is. This is what that is. And this is where they come from. And these are the results that they have on all of us. So fit shaming and fat shaming, you're going to see in this clip, just come from judgment. And they just come from a desire to categorize people and put them in boxes. And all of that, as you know, just comes from fear. We're just scared of what we don't know. We're scared of what we want sometimes. And we're scared of what we do or don't know will get us there. So sometimes we want to keep ourselves from that in order to stay safe. All right, I'm going to show some more clips here. It's helpful actually to go back to our conversation that we had a couple months ago, where I was experiencing, and I actually have kind of for some time, in my family, I, if we experience people who are thin or who are fit or like who take care of their bodies, I noticed that there were comments that they were, it was almost like a sour grapes um, experience for them, like they must not be happy. They must be denying themselves happiness in order to look that way. Um, and so like I watching that, I was like, why are we assuming that they're not happy? Or like, why are we assuming that they're not? Um, why are we making them less of their uh, lesser, you know, lesser value of their people for being fit? And it's such a tricky topic because it's like kind of an ideal. Right. So it's how could we be how could we be shaming an ideal? Like that doesn't really make sense. Like it's such a tricky topic to go um to really dive in with people. Um but really it's just about our judgment on the appearance of how people look and the uh, the uh the meaning we make behind that observation. So whether it's fish shaming or fat shaming, it's the meaning we make about another person and how that represents like how that sits with us. It's not it's not about the other person about what is, what is the meaning that you're making by looking at someone's behavior or looking at someone's appearance? What are you making that mean about yourself? Yes. You are so fast. Okay, so Sam, I want to give you full credit. Sam wrote under what is fixing and what is fascinating. And she said both are essentially the same behavior. Making yourself feel superior by holding people inferior based on their appearance in order to defend against a perceived threat to the self. In order to defend yourself from people who question your way of being, you come up with ideas to keep people at a distance. Fit shaming is a great way to keep yourself from feeling bad about yourself. That's like a really interesting take on it. It's much easier to believe that the people are unhappy, obsessed with the way they look, insecure about their bodies, striving for per uh, perfection, superficial, wealthy snobs, removed from reality, etc., than to acknowledge that feeling that you believe you can't have what you have, what they have. It's easier to not want this way of life when you assume that there's a high cost for to pay for being fit, and the reality may be that you actually do want what they have, but you feel like you can't obtain it, so you like put distance and judgment between yourself and your desire. 
um, okay, so fat shaming, um, I quote, make, again, make you feel better about yourself and be better to hold yourself higher than to be equal to others who exemplify negative ways of being. Common assumptions are that people who have more weight are weak, lazy, unintelligent, to be associated with that people would mean that you're also weak and lazy and stupid. Um, this is so good, and you wrote more stuff here, but maybe we can like expand on some of these things. Well, I've been thinking a lot about this topic in terms of manifestation, mm -hmm. and we hold ourselves back from the desire that we want, just that we feel like it's not possible for us. Um, we hold ourselves back from the desire, and we make it, we make our world safe, and that is where I would be like questioning, okay, ask yourself, like, what do you actually want? Because it is the fact, it is the fact for you that it's, you're super comfortable with the body that you have and you love your body and you just like, there's, you practice so much self-love for your body. You're, you're good, right? There's no ideal that you need to subscribe to. But if you're finding yourself like teeter-tottering with like, I don't know if I want this, I don't know. Like, then it's like, ask yourself what it is that you actually desire. Like, what is your full desire for your body? So good. I love that. Um, and yeah, I think that big indicators to what you want and what you fear are both within you, right? And, and yeah. that's what I, yeah. what I mean by that is sometimes the fit people have an inner fat shamer, you know, that's, that's used to police yeah. us, right? And sometimes the overweight people have an inner fit shamer. And I think, yeah. I think I have to give more background on like what a fit shamer could look like. I noticed one thing, um, we may have touched on this in our last conversation, but oftentimes fit people are taken for their physical uh, physical appearance as people who can't be deep. They can't be spiritual. Um, they can't have other um, pursuits, other um, interests. And that comes from a that comes from a logical place. Like because if you only think a fit person got that way because they're spending a ton of time counting their macros, hanging out on the stair climber, um, talking about their body, looking in the mirror, taking selfies, <laughs> um, and what have you, and keeping a journal of every single week that they've ever lifted. That makes sense. You probably, if you also have a nine to five and a family, like, you probably don't have time for too much else. But that's where knowledge can really have a lot of power because it's like helping people become more knowledgeable about what sustainable fitness is. And in my opinion, yeah. sustainable fitness, it does not equal dis um, fitness that requires a ton of discipline. What requires a ton of discipline is not necessarily sustainable. Pleasure equals sustainability. So if you're really enjoying the, the type of fitness um, experiences that you engage in, and if you are, if your body also feels safe while doing those, then the pleasure will continue. Like the body will permit you to continue doing that thing because it knows it's safe doing it. But if you're doing an internal beat up and fashion and all the live long day while you're macro counting and all these things, other people are correct. There isn't enough mental space to also think about spirituality, also have other intellectual pursuits because the whole time you're in your head yelling at yourself that you could get, you could gain weight if you don't do this, count this macro and do all these things. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like eating up everything. I think my eyes are like proper. <laughs> that was so good. And that's so helpful. Because so many people start their their body journey with the idea of with hate. Oh. Hate for, for change, right? Shame and hate to change my body. Yeah. Like you know, for me to to have that desire that I want, I need to hate I need to come from a place of hate because that'll be enough motivation for me. Change. Or you're saying pleasure, 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 pleasure. Like it's Moving, moving towards love for your body, moving towards this lovely, delicious place that you know is in your, is in your heart and in your body. Like it's the place you know that you're supposed to live. Yes. But going there instead of like that is your motivation. Yeah. Rather than I, wait, I love, and like this is why I need to change and this will be my motivation. Yeah. But if someone has no other paradigm, no other context, they don't understand and they don't believe that a fit person can be fit and be in love with their body and, and enjoying and having pleasure because they only know what it's like to hate their body to motivate to get there. So when they see the person that's already lost the weight, they think they must hate their body times 20. Because if I'm here hating my body, they must really hate themselves and stay. That's it, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's not something that like that you want to su subscribe to either, right? You're like, in order for me to get there, I have to hate myself. I don't want to do that. that. Exactly. Well, and but it feels a desire of yours, right? It may still be a desire of yours is to, uh, to be shit. But you won't like yourself because you're like, if I have to be covered with hate myself, I don't want it. Yeah. And then I think that I speak another language sometimes that it sounds that way when I'm like, no, it is your birthright to enjoy your body and to be fit and healthy. People are like, wait, you can have all everything? You can have it all? <laughs> Not only can you have it all, it is your birthright to have it all. You're supposed to have it all. <laughs> I love it so much. <laughs> How amazing is Sam, right? Oh, I've never met Samantha in person. She's in Canada, 
but she has been such a source of wisdom for me over the years and we become we become good friends even though we are um very far away and we've never met in person <laughs> yay for uh friends on the internet <laughs> um all right so Steps to clearing. If you are an open channel to the thing you want, it comes to you quite quickly. But if you have unconscious beliefs that run counter to what you want, you will do 90% of the work, not see results, and get really frustrated and quit and make that core belief true. So these steps can help us to get past this, stay consistent, move forward, and ultimately change our frequency. Number one, we need more desire. I want to lose 12 to 25 pounds, something like that. I want to get super fit. I want to see my abs. I want to have less joint pain. I want to have more energy, so on and so forth. Next, notice what protectors come up. Be that neutral observer and just watch like what thoughts, what things immediately spring up that say, hey, you can't have that, you shouldn't have that, it's not safe to have that. Number three, decide what feels best to believe. So when that thought pops up, that protector, whatever you want to call it, check like your feelings around it. If it doesn't feel good, then know that there are other options available. And hopefully you'll be able to locate another option, another thought or belief that feels better to think about, to believe. Now, choosing those, choosing those new thoughts and beliefs, trying them on for size, we get to act as if. We get to choose new actions now that feel aligned with these new beliefs, with this new thought, what have you. Then wash, rinse, repeat, because we're gonna take some actions and then we're gonna remember what we want we're going to feel the resistance again, and then we just keep readjusting and keep redeciding. Nope, I'm going to choose to believe this. So it'll just keep cycling and cycling. But as your wash, rinse, repeating, and going through those cycles more and more, you're changing. You're becoming this next version of you, and it's so beautiful. And so to close out, I just want to introduce you to one last client today. There will be more tomorrow, <laughs> but I want to introduce you to Danielle. She had an incredible transformation journey, and she really embodies the results that happen when you go through this process, when you stick with it, and when your ultimate goal is just to love yourself more, is just to come into a place of complete unconditional love and enjoyment of and with your body. Okay, so without further ado, let's hear from Danielle. The main belief is that this is where my body is just gonna be. Cause I knew that I've been pushing all of my effort and have done all kinds of diet fads. And I'm like, I think this is just the farthest my body can go. That was my limiting belief for a while. Cause like when you're getting out of old habits, it's hard. Remembering back when I first decided to invest in LDU method. And I remember thinking, oh my God, this really speaks loudly to me because I've been trying everything. You have no idea. I've spent so much money on so many different programs, so many different amazing coaches that I have great relationships with, but nothing was working. Like I just hit a plateau. And it was that last layer, you see it in my face. <laughs> it was just what I needed. Wow. I'm like, oh, I know that's gonna be the hardest. But you know what? I'm gonna try it. And I did it. And like I have the course and you just kept saying, I'm worth it. And it's okay if I have these little sideways and like these little turn offs and then I'll guide myself back on the path. And, mm -hmm. and that's exactly what I did. <laughs> I'm just so proud of you. You went from literally being like this is my body's not going to change. Like, this is all it is. To where you're yeah. at. I'm Yeah. <laughs> it's a big deal to me. It's huge. You are there now. Like, you did lose whatever remaining amount of weight you wanted to. You did get the tone and the curves and the muscle that you wanted. How, like, how quickly did that happen for you? And when did you first notice, like, oh, my body really is changing? The first couple months, the first two months, I already had friends telling me, like, you're, you look different. Like, you look really good, girl. Your, your face is slimming. But I didn't believe it at first, you know, because, like, I, I don't notice it. <laughs> but I noticed it myself this month. And not to sound conceited, but, like, I was trying on different outfits. And <laughs> I was like, yeah, my body is banging right now. Like, it's really good. <laughs> I was staring at it, and I'm like, I've never looked at my own body like this before. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> we're meant to be beautiful, and we're meant to love it. Like, love our body. Oh, oh my gosh, I still get goosebumps when I listen to those interview snippets from her, um, from her grad interview. Oh my gosh, isn't Danielle amazing? She's so beautiful and she's just so epic and her whole mindset, oh, it's like perfect. She's amazing. So to recap today, we examine the EQ and frequency of fitness and fat loss. We explore the energetics of sustainably fit people. I delivered some tools and tactics to help you embody the same frequency 
and we learn how to practice the new way of doing fitness and being sustainably fit, which generates a lifetime of easy success in this area. Homework. Whoop, whoop. Maybe you guys love the homework. <laughs> Pull out your journal when you have a moment today and practice fit far on yourself in relation to your biggest health and fitness goal. So again, it's beliefs, which create thoughts, which create feelings, which create actions, which create results. What core belief, when you go up that whole route, what core belief do you discover? Then number two, free write on the following. Does this core belief run counter to my desires? What would be the best thoughts and beliefs I could embody for my highest level of health, body confidence, and happiness? And then number three, take some time to give your body your top two love languages. I love this one so much. You guys, if you guys are familiar with uh, the five love languages, they are words of affirmation, physical touch, quality time, acts of service, and giving, uh, receiving gifts. So take your top two and take a moment at some point today to give those to your body. So if one of your love languages is words of affirmation, girl, you step in front of that mirror and you tell yourself how hot you are, okay? Tell yourself all of your beautiful attributes and characteristics that make you the exquisite human being that you are. If your love language is physical touch, give yourself a hug. It's okay. You know, we all had to do it during the pandemic when we, you know, were social distancing. Give yourself a hug. <laughs> if it's quality time, go spend some time with your body. Like go take a walk in nature and just, just like be with yourself. Feel the sensations that are going through your body as you feel the air, you know, sweeping across your cheek or as you feel the soft ground beneath your feet. I know this sounds a little cheesy, but this is love, guys. This is what it means. This is what it takes. Or go spend time working out or go spend time with your body in a different way. That might be taking a bubble bath, you know, like just sitting on the couch and listening to the birds or the rain or whatever is going on at the moment, <laughs> listening to some music, maybe. All right. So there's your homework. Tomorrow is all about building a fierce Brain. So remember our beautiful Peely from pre-training video number three, where she was like, your website, my website, um, it doesn't currently, but the homepage used to say, help me build a fierce frame. And then Peely quoted that. She's like, you literally helped me build a fierce frame. Tomorrow, that is what we are learning how to do. Lastly, before you go, what part of today's training resonated with you the most? Comment below and let me know what was that moment for you today? What was that aha light bulb moment where you just got so, so much value? I would just, I would love to hear what you really got out of this training today. So thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you so much. I will see you tomorrow for day four of our training. Mwah. Bye.